It's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. Welcome to the show, everyone. The Bison wrapped up non-conference play this weekend at 3-0 with another convincing win, 56-0 over Robert Morris. Coach Kleiman is here on the set with me. And, Coach, I thought Robert Morris coming in had a good defense. Uh, I didn't expect the margin because uh, they do have a good team and they're going to play well in their conference. Yeah, they really are. They do things the right way, play good defense, special teams, and try to run the football. But uh, when you turn the football over as many times as they yeah. did in the first uh, quarter, and our guys were able to capitalize on that, and that's something we talked about, and the guys really capitalized on those mistakes and turned them into touchdowns. Sometimes coming off a bye, you never know, but the guys were really sharp, weren't they? Yeah, they really were. We had a really good week of practice last week. Uh, guys had great focus, great energy, and, and we wanted to jump on them early and have a sense of urgency from the start, and they did. Yeah, no question. Let's roll the highlights. It was a big first quarter, lots of action. 35 first quarter points, unbelievable. And the Bison came out sharp right away. On offense, it was a nine yard play to Nate Jensen, who had a good game at Eastern Washington, started off well in this one also. Yeah, good job reading this out by Easton and throwing it to Jensen the slot. You know, the RMU defense, uh, they forced a third down here, but they lost contain. Yeah, they spilled it and didn't have anybody outside there, and uh, you're not going to catch Lance. He's out in the open field with a big game for a touchdown. Yeah, this is the start of an amazing day for Lance Dunn. It's, it's quite the stat line. We're going to talk a lot about it, but it's 7 to nothing. Here's a risky play. This is where the turnovers start for RMU, a quick pitch deep. Great play by Logan. Yeah, great job by Logan McCorm uh, McCormick from Kimberly getting the strip and landing on it for... Uh, that may be his first strip, and I know it's his first recovery. <laughs> yeah, all in one play. That's uh, very impressive by the true freshman. Here's an option play. Yeah, we've been working on this since uh, early fall camp and uh, set itself up, and good job by Easton reading it out and Lance getting to the corner. 14 nothing at this point, and the route is on. They played their backup quarterback. His name is Matthew Barr. Uh, Jimmy Walker had been starting, but Trey Dempsey, right spot, right time here. Yeah, really good job by Dan Marlett forcing the, the early throw, and then Trey steps in front and makes a big pick and gets us in the end zone. Love to score on defense. Dan Marlett played well again. It's 21-0, and this is a Dan Marlett play. More takeaways, and Dan was really active uh, on this play. Gets in the back and strips it. Yeah, he, Dan's feeling really comfortable now playing and does a really good job of reading his keys, getting a big strip, and then the, there's Jabril Cox getting a big recovery. Yeah, Jabril had a, another great day. He had eight tackles in this game. We're going to talk a little bit more about him later. It's good to see Brock Robbins out playing healthy. Yeah, really good to have Brock back. He missed uh, uh, the last game and was down with a foot injury, and he's uh, back healthy, and we're glad to have him. Bruce Anderson, he's really good in short yardage. Yeah, Bruce is a, does a good job finding the end zone. Good job by the Rams up front, giving a push. 28 nothing at this point as we roll through. We're still in the first quarter, and Bruce is an athlete. Uh, th this play right here might get you a gold medal in the Olympics. He even sticks the landing. Yeah, does a good job of uh, <laughs> selling his body out and getting the first down. Wow, that's impressive right there. It's a third and seven play here. This is a tremendous throw. Yeah, great job protecting up front by the, wow. by the Rams and, and by the back, and then good throw to, to Darius on, on a rope. You know, Jeff Elias, uh, he missed some time, uh, was injured. He's quite a weapon when he's healthy. Jeff's a, a terrific football player, missed the first game in the Fargo Dome. As a senior, you relish those opportunities you get in the Fargo Dome, and he had another big day for us. Moving along on offense, I really like this screen play here. Yeah, good job uh, setting up the first block with Cooney and then uh, uh, getting in, inside for the touchdown. Good job by Lance, good throw by Easton. Yeah, 35 uh, nothing. Now that is the end of the first quarter, 35 nothing. It's the second quarter now. Easton continued to throw it well. I thought he was sharp all day. He really was sharp. And this is a great job by Jeff Ilias. Uh, it's a 50-50 ball, and he takes it away from the defender. Three catch day for Ilias, 53 yards. Here's another one. And those 50-50 balls are important, yeah, aren't they? Good job by doing something after the catch and getting a first down for us. Third and nine here. Good decision by Easton. Looks fast on this play. Yeah, really good job of stepping up into the pocket and then uh, scrambling and getting down and getting a good first down for us. Strong route coming up by R.J. Erzendowski. Uh, it, it looks like an easy throw. It's not when the receiver's tight against the outside. No, and he's on one hash throwing it to the opposite sideline and, and uh, throws it with pinpoint accuracy and, and good uh, route by uh, R.J. 42 nothing at this point. We're in the second quarter here. And, you know, Lance Dunn touched it four times and scored on all of them. Yeah, big, uh, big play <laughs> by Lance. Great hole by the offensive line. Did a good job. We ran our A-gap power and 
he cut it back and outran everybody to the end zone. It's like throwing a perfect game in baseball or something. Four touches, four touchdowns. Amazing. And the first half score, 49 to nothing. Just an impressive half by North Dakota State. Robert Morris is not that bad a team, but the Bison were all over him. One first down for Robert Morris, 12 for the Bison. You see the total yards there. It was a big day for Lance Dunn, and as a result, he is our Gate City Bank hot seat this week. Lance, what is the most enjoyable thing you did this past summer? Uh, definitely going to the lake with the friends. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Tell me something cool about your hometown of Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, Dan Gable went to my high school. No way. Yep. Wow, that's a good one. All right. When it comes to phone usage, do you like to text or talk more? Definitely text. <laughs> this is a fan question. If you had to give up movies or video games, what would you give up? Movies. <laughs> Couldn't give movies. up the video games, movies. huh? If you were given $10 million, what would you? What would be your first purchase? Buy my family a, a house. Good call. What makes a great leader? Uh, set an example. Okay. What do you like most about that new locker room? Uh, sound system. Cranks up pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> what does the tradition of Bison football mean to you? Just brotherhood, yeah. Definitely yeah. brotherhood. And, uh, is being togetherness and pride, having pride. Okay, thanks, Lance. Damn. Well, Coach, 49 nothing at halftime over Robert Morris. What did you expect in the second half? Well, we're going to play a lot of young guys. Uh, they were going to have an opportunity, and we were still evaluating an awful lot of guys for the conference season and for the future. So it was a big half for a lot of those guys to perform. Let's roll the tape here in the second half. And there were some great plays by these young guys. There's some great talent in this program. This was a good look at Adam Cofield today. He got 25 carries this weekend, and he did some nice things. Yeah, he really did. Did a good job following his blocks. I thought the younger offensive great. lineman blocked exceptionally well. Cole Davison in at quarterback, Sean Engel. This is his first career catch. Yeah, great job by Sean attacking the football and then doing something after the catch. And here's another name that people might just be getting familiar with, Daniel Polanski. Pretty good throw here by Cole. Really good uh, throw on a third and long, and Daniel does a great job running a seam route and making a big catch. Well, Cole has some speed, some athleticism. He shows some of that speed here and uh, darts right in for a touchdown. Yeah, great job reading the defensive end, and he pulls it and gets a big touchdown. Unfortunately, he gets injured on this play. We'll talk about it a little bit later. It's 56 nothing at this point. And one of the guys we wanted to see this weekend was Jabril Cox. He was so good on special teams at Eastern Washington. Eight tackles in this game. He did a lot of nice things here in this second half. Boy, he really did. He felt real comfortable. He hit his fits uh, really well. And uh, uh, he played a lot early in the game, too. So he's a guy that uh, we know we're going to utilize once we get into conference play. What's his greatest asset? Here's another play by Jabril. Just length, speed, athleticism, all those things. He just needs game reps and experience. Closed out real nice there. Got the shoestring tackle. James Hendricks. Uh, at safety, this is a nice pick here, and he's he's making good strides. Yeah, James is doing a really nice job for us uh, at, at safety. Allows us to move uh, Grimsley around a little bit, and uh, I think it's the second pick of the year. Yeah, that's great. Get down, James. You're going to get hurt here, but uh, good play by James on this play. Yeah, excellent uh, play. Athleticism. Now, Adam Cofield, no Ty Brooks in this game, so we get another Cofield carry. He got 25 carries. Some of those would have went to Ty. Ty was not available, so again, more looks for Adam. Yeah, good job just uh, going north and south. That's what Adam is. He's a north and south runner. He's a physical runner. Uh, I think these reps will help him coming down the line. Great job by Henry reading the same play that Cole did for the touchdown and getting a big game. That was a nice read by Henry Van Dellen as we move to the fourth quarter right now and Henry throws a nice ball to get us started here in the fourth quarter. Yeah another third down uh, uh, situation for us and he hits Daniel Polanski on an out route and great job by Daniel separating from the receiver. One of the defensive players that stood out late in this game was flying all over the field playing fast was Aaron Mercadell. Tell yeah. us about him. Uh, Merck's a, a sophomore redshirt sophomore from California extremely talented uh, Young man, same thing. He's behind a lot of really good linebackers. He's been a really good special teams player for us uh, through the first three weeks, and he's an active guy that, uh, uh, like you see here, he, he can put his face on people, and he's an excellent tackler. Are some of these plays late in a game like this uh, things that can lead you to put guys on special teams uh, in an important game? Yeah, especially now, because now we're going to get down to where we only can travel 60, so the spots are really getting to be tight once you get into conference play. That was Ross Kennelly there. He's also a, a snapper. Uh, as well. There's Mercadell yeah. again. Wow, playing fast. Good, good solid open field tackle. All right, that's it for the final. It was 56 to nothing. The Bison just blew out Robert Morris. Impressive performance. Just 57 total yards for Robert Morris. Third down conversions. RMU did not have one. The Bison were very good on third down, and that bodes well going into conference play. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game.
I think this week was a huge, huge uh, emphasis on trying to build depth with getting some uh, younger guys, more inexperienced guys in there, uh, myself included. Um, and, you know, the way we performed was, it was awesome. It's, it's a good, uh, good thing to do to go into the conference play. And so uh, we can just build from here. I know coaches, we have an emphasis on an owning your role. So I wanted to own my role on special teams. And whenever I got the shot to play on defense, I was going to make the most of it. So I think I did a good job at that. For the game, we just talking, competing our heart out, uh, hard as we can, and dominating, really. And I think those turnovers came from us just competing way harder than they were and just trying to dominate every snap, every play. And same with the offense. So we weren't letting up at all, no matter what the score was or, or how we was feeling. The standard was to dominate. Fun to see Trey make some big plays. While our NODAC insurance player of the game was Lance Dunn, Dunn had four touchdowns in this game this weekend. He is the first Bison player to have four total touchdowns since DJ McNorton did it on that frigid day in Bozeman, Montana, when the Bison beat Montana State in the playoffs. Three carries, 111 yards, one catch for 10. All four touches were touchdowns. That's an incredible stat line. The, the O-line, uh, they, they created a lot of holes, so I just took the opportunity, uh, took a full advantage of the opportunities. And uh, I just told myself before the game, uh, every time I got the ball, I wanted to make something happen with it. I've never done anything like that. Uh, I'm really proud of uh, our offense. Uh, we all executed, and you know, I couldn't do anything without them. So. Great job by Lance. We saw some interesting plays. Lance had an option play. We're going to talk about a little Wildcat here. Bruce Anderson out of the Wildcat. And these are things in a game like this you can try, get on tape for future opponents as well. Yeah, we tried the Wildcat here. There's some times where you want the quarterback to run the football, but you don't want to utilize your quarterback. And it's so it probably makes the defenses have to defend your offense a little bit differently. And that's something that uh, will continue to advance. I really like that option play to Lance Dunn as well. That was really cool. Now as we look at the uh, quarterback situation, we talked about Cole Davis on that touchdown. He did get injured. Uh, so if Easton uh, is the starter, Cole Davis is the backup. If Cole is not available, this is really the situation a quarterback could be Henry. James Hendricks would be an emergency guy. He got a couple snaps late in this game. Yeah, and I talked to the offensive coaches. I wanted to get James a few snaps because he would be our emergency guy. Uh, Henry's going to get a lot more reps. And once again, that, that's where our double rep system in fall camp really yeah. helps us because Henry took as many reps as Easton and Cole did through the month of August. Um, so Henry has a great opportunity this week to elevate to that backup. And then... Uh, uh, James will be our emergency guy. He still has to play defense for us. Yeah. He's doing such a great job there, but uh, we'll give him a handful of plays uh, offensively. James played quarterback here for two years. Yeah. He's a really smart kid, and uh, um, we'll just kind of see where Cole's at. We'll learn probably a little bit more probably by Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Is James a guy that you can really rely on him to do anything? He's like a, a Swiss Army knife. Uh, you said he played quarterback, doing great on defense, yeah. but he will accept any role. Yeah, and he's so smart, and, and uh, if we simplify some things for him, he understands what we're doing on defense now we have to get him caught up to speed a little bit back again on offense after missing the spring and fall yeah. camp and and we'll like I said we'll give him a handful of plays in there uh, but uh, first and foremost he's going to be uh, a safety force on defense well we all know how tough the Missouri Valley Conference is going to be and let's just get a snapshot through non-conference play there's a lot of teams that are three and zero. Oh. A couple of these have FBS wins, and this doesn't even include Youngstown State, who was two and one, and the one loss was to Pitt, and it went overtime. This league is going to be a gauntlet, isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is, and uh, everybody has eight weeks in a row where it's going to be fierce competition back and forth, and you have no guaranteed W on there. It doesn't matter if it's home, doesn't matter if it's away, doesn't matter what the opponent did the week before, what you did the week before. Uh, everybody knows each other so well, and that's what makes this league so great, is everybody knows each other, everybody knows everybody's strengths and weaknesses. Kudos to Western Illinois for that 52 to yeah. 10 win at Coastal Carolina. That is very impressive. You know, something that happened this weekend, Coach, Target Field had a football game. It was a Division Three game, St. Thomas and St. John's. This is the, how the football field looked. This is pertinent to the Bison because the Bison will play there in 2019 to open the season against Butler. As you see the, how it looks, the football field, you know, we kind of envisioned it last year when we were down there, but this is how it looks. What do you think? Uh, I'm excited. And I yeah. know our, our players and, and some of the recruits uh, that are going to be here in 2019 are going to be excited. I know all our fans down in the Twin Cities are going to be really excited. It's going to be an electric atmosphere. I, I hope they can find a way to get 40, 45,000 in there. Uh, what, a, what a great treat for our guys. 
guys, and I know that uh, some of our administration went down there and looked at uh, yep. uh, the field and some of the setup, but uh, I thought it was a cool thing, and uh, I understand it was a great football game down yeah. there, so the atmosphere will be dynamite. Yeah, tip of the cap to St. John's and St. Thomas. There was 37,000 at that Division Three game, and we hope to pack it with Bison fans in 2019. It's going to be a lot of fun. The families of Bison players, what they go through and what they will do for their sons, it's a great story. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. A lot of Bison players are from far away. Florida is really far away, so some of the families from Florida took matters into their own hands. They just moved up here, and their football playing sons appreciate it. Beth Hool has the story in this week's Olaf Anderson Construction Feature Story. It's a special moment after each Bison football game that most don't ever see. The players reuniting with their families, many of whom will get back in a car or board a plane till the next weekend. But those days are over for the Andersons. It was hard traveling back and forth. The flight's not coming in like we want, so it was just much easier. A lot easier to attend this game by moving up here and supporting him all week long. Junior running back Bruce Anderson's parents pack up their life every fall now and move from Florida to Fargo. All that is good to be around me a lot. You know, I get to be around them. I get to see my mom. I'm a mama's boy. So I can always see my mom. I don't have to FaceTime her no more and I can conversate with her. The Andersons made the move last season and the trend is catching on as senior safety Trey Dempsey's parents have followed suit. It was just so important to me to to be here this last year because I didn't want to miss it. It was just so much I was missing over the years. Dempsey's mom made periodic trips to Fargo over the last few years, but his dad Leo has never seen him play college football in person until this year's home opener. But I always snuck the radio while I was at work, you know, so I, I might have not been here to, to see it, or, but I heard it, you know, and it was awesome, nothing like it. To leave Florida, uh, where they've been their whole life, and just come up here and support their son um, in my last year, it's just great. It shows uh, true love from the heart from my parents. Well, the idea is to celebrate their boys' successes. Anderson. The Andersons moved to town last year on one of the hardest days in Bruce's college career. I could imagine being at home and seeing my son in so much pain and not being here. So for me, that was awesome just to be here. That was the first time he had really suffered an injury like that, and being uh, away from the game so long. And I think us being here helped him get through that stretch. Back healthy and ready to attack his junior season alongside Dempsey, aiming to leave NDSU with another national championship. These two young men agree the support of their families is making a difference. They keep me very sane. They keep me grounded. So whenever they're up here, you know, they just keep me level headed. Keep my head straight. Keep uh, my eyes on the right target. Uh, keep me focused mainly. Reporting for the Bison Football Show, I'm Beth Hool. Coach, that's two great families right there and a commitment by the parents. Uh, the, the kids appreciate it, and it shows a lot, doesn't it? It really does, especially coming from that far away. It's so neat when we go on a road trip uh, on Friday night, all the parents are hanging out in the hotel lobby. It's great for our players to be able to see their parents. great for us coaches to be able to interact with the parents. And uh, I know, like, you look at Dems and Bruce Anderson, they're eating pretty good during the week because mom's <laughs> cooking food for them, so they're excited about that. You know, all the families, they really go through a lot uh, of commitment uh, to watch their kids play football. Uh, it's across the board. It's not just the Andersons and Dempsey's. It's pretty neat to see all those parents there at the end of the game. Yeah, it really is. They travel. Everybody, you know, yeah. our, our Bison Nation travels, our families travel. Uh, it's a neat thing to see after games, especially on those road trips, uh, when all the parents are standing outside the locker room greeting their sons. And, and our, I know our players really appreciate seeing their parents after games. Oh, no question. Hey, in this week's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison, Logan McCormick from Wisconsin is playing right away. And he played very well against Robert Morris this weekend. He played for Kimberly High School in Wisconsin, and Kimberly is a juggernaut. 56-0 while Logan was there. Kid's a winner. He says since he is playing right away at defensive end, he just needs to be a good listener. I just want to take the coaching that uh, Coach Williams has given me and work on it every single day. Um, we obviously watch film on practice and game film and footage of the other teams and stuff like that. So just getting better at the fundamentals and the basics, that's all I really care about right now is making sure I'm doing all my right read steps, all that good stuff. Before we talk about Logan, Kimberly High School, 56-0 when he was there, four state titles, and that's a high level of football. That is unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Coach Jones does a phenomenal job there, and uh, we had him up for a speak at our clinic, did a great job, and what, what a great program, and, and 
you know, Logan, what a mature young man. And yeah. uh, he, like you said, came from a great high school program, knew how to transition into a college, uh, very physical player, uh, real excited about his future. For the record, that's Colton Eagles High School, too. Uh, he came ready to play as well. And Logan, uh, coming from that high school, probably helped him be ready as a true freshman. Yeah, and, and the fact that he won. You know, yeah. being able to understand how to win the culture of winning. There's a culture of winning at Kimberly. There's a culture of winning here, and I know that helped him. And uh, like you said, he's a great listener because we have some phenomenal defensive ends that are older upperclassmen that have taken him under his wing and really helped him. That's great. Uh, keep it up, Logan. Great job. Uh, coming up, Missouri State uh, for homecoming. It's a big week, Hall of Fame week uh, for the Bison. We'll set it up. Coach, it's the start of conference play. That's always an interesting reset, isn't it? Everybody's 0-0, zero and zero and you have to kind of refocus, especially with the Missouri Valley. It's the toughest conference in FCS. Yeah, without question. And every game's a, a, a new battle. You just try to go 1-0 and oh for the week and win each day leading up to Saturday. We all know that anybody can beat anybody on any given Saturday. Missouri State right now is at the bottom, uh, is in our Verizon look ahead, but uh, Coach Steck is doing a good job. They have talented players, and, and certainly nobody is a gimme. No, absolutely not. We played them there last year, and it was a 10 nothing game going into the fourth quarter, and I thought they played exceptional defense. Uh, they have some really talented kids running the football. You can watch, and I know Missouri's not playing really well, but they put 42 on Missouri in the first half, so yeah. they have some ability, and, and just a matter of when they get clicking, and uh, as we know, they're going to know, and they're going to be ready to play the Bison. And they have good skill players on offense. Their quarterback's a transfer. He's a pretty good player. What, what does homecoming week mean to the players? Well, it's great because we get to see a lot of former players. A lot of former players will come back uh, later in the week on Thursday and come to a practice or come on Friday and go to a practice and and that's why we do this is for the former players that uh, have kind of built that foundation and built that standard that we're trying to live up to. Well it's going to be a fun week Hall of Fame week homecoming week a one o'clock kickoff remember that homecoming is always an earlier kickoff coach likes those earlier kickoffs yeah. <laughs> we'll have you ready uh, 24 station Bison Radio Network NBC North Dakota ESPN 3 lots of options for you we hope to see you at the Fargo Dome though and get this baby rolling. It's conference play. It's time to get after it. Enjoy it. The Bison are 3-0.